Hello brothers and sisters, today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it as we study His Word. And uh, in today's Bible study lesson, we are going to be focusing uh, so much on this question, how can I be prepared to die? How can I be prepared to die? I know this one is shocking for many, but uh, we have to prepare. So, hope you're on a comfortable seat. You've got a pen and a paper and, uh, of course, your Bible. And then, let's get started. We are living in very uncertain times. With all these uh, diseases and all the things which are happening in the world, and uncertainties and left, right, and center. We have family members and people dying. And uh, we get so much scared about death because death and dying are uncomfortable subjects for most people. In particular, when it comes to one's own death. And many of us make our way through life never giving a thought about our morality until a serious illness or the loss of a loved one or some other jarring occasion confronts us with the inescapable reality that one day we will die. In the book of Ecclesiastes 7 verse 2, it tells us that death is the destiny of everyone. The living should take this to heart. Everybody's going to die. So how do I take my own death to heart? How can I be prepared to die? Scripture calls death an enemy. Hmm. 1 Corinthians 15, 26, it says, For the last, uh, I mean, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Hmm. So death is an enemy? Okay. Because of death's finality and because of so much about it is unknown, it is not unusual for us to feel anxious about death and afraid of dying. But the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ has destroyed the enemy of death once and for all. Second Timothy 1.10 Now with the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ, He has destroyed death and through the good news He has brought eternal life into full view. Those who have trusted Jesus Christ for salvation need not to fear death but uh, can have full assurance and confidence in facing the grave and after death comes judgment. Hebrews 9.27 It says, It is appointed unto man once to die but after this, judgment. And most people are not ready to meet their maker. Because the first and foremost way to prepare for death is to be sure that you are in a right relationship with God. Having a right relationship with God starts with acknowledging our sin before Him through confession and repentance. And it means placing our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. Okay? The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, tells us if you openly declare Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved salvation is God's gift to us we only need to receive it by faith it's free Ephesians 2 8 it says for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God so it's it's free it's a free gift all you need to do is uh, receive it by faith. And a right relationship with God through Jesus Christ frees us from the penalty of sin. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 It says, And to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which is delivered to us from the wrath to come. Romans 8, 1 and 2 it says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law 
of the spirit of life is uh, in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death you see also Hebrews 9 5 9 15 it says for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance okay so Jesus frees us from the penalty of sin okay and also don't forget that Jesus frees us from death itself from death itself first Corinthians 15 22 to 23 it says for as in Adam all die even so in Christ shall all be made alive but every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterwards they that are Christ at his coming think about also Romans 5 12 to 17 it also gives us a picture that Jesus himself is, is, is getting a rid of this death think about this Romans 5 12 to 17 it says wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin so death passed upon all men for all have sinned for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law nevertheless death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression who is a figure of him that was to come but not as the offense so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one many are dead much more are the grace of God and by the gift of grace which is by one man Jesus Christ has abounded unto many and not as it was by that one by one that sinned so is the gift for the judgment was by one to condemnation but the free gift is of many offenses unto one justification and now look at verse 17 for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more they which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ you sing now Jesus has come to give us life. One, one, one more verse, Romans five, uh, Romans seven twenty four. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this this death? Paul was saying that there is only one man who can deliver me from the body of this death, and that is Jesus Christ. Okay. Knowledge of Jesus liberates us from the fear of dying because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood and the Son also became flesh and blood. Jesus became flesh and blood. Only as a human being could he die and he only and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Jesus. Only in this way could be set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying think about Hebrews 2 verse 14 because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood the son also became flesh and blood for only as a human being could he die and only dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death hmm. Jesus did this for us so the sting of death is uh, removed for true Christians because we know where we are going when we die our perishing bodies will be transformed into immortal ones that will live forever with Christ in God's eternal kingdom okay first Corinthians 15 42 you can read all the way to 58 talking about the resurrection of the dead you know how we are sown in corruption raised in in corruption 
sown in dishonor, raised in glory, sown in weakness, raised in power, you know, sown natural body, raised a spiritual body. You can read all through to 58 and you'll understand in reality we are never truly ready to live until we are prepared to die. And after we have placed our faith in Jesus Christ for salvation, we can further prepare for death by staying in right relationship with the people in our lives. And we ought to consider our relationships with the family members, friends, neighbors, and co-workers. Are there any relationships that uh, need to be reconciled? Of course. Please do so. Is there any person we need to forgive or someone who needs our forgiveness? I'm sure they're there. Go and do so. Are there words that need to be said? Please go and say them. Concerning practical ways to prepare, we ought to realistically consider the financial impact of our death. And of course, the kind of impact that our death will have on our family and do our best to plan ahead. Plan for them. Love them also. Do we need to draw up a will or other legal documents? purchase life insurance or set aside funds for funeral and burial expenses of course we will all die so fix all this another thoughtful arrangement is to leave written instructions for our memorial service things like that I'm not being superstitious but I'm only giving a reality it has to happen to all of us whether we like it or we don't and scripture teaches us to live with an awareness of our death and and an eternal perspective. This means investing our time, talents, and resources in things that have everlasting value. And Jesus described this eternal mindset as daily dying for him. Alright? He said in the book of Luke 9.23-24 that if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up the cross daily, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you try to give up your life for my sake, of course you will save it. That's what Jesus said. Believers live their lives with the hope of heaven and readiness to lay down their lives until they get there. And death for the believer is the beginning of a new eternal phase of life. And when our days on earth are come to, to, to an end, we will transition to the beginning of, a, of an heavenly life. Heaven is our true home where God waits to welcome us into his arms. In his eternal kingdom, all heartache and pain and death will cease. There will be nothing like that. Think about Revelation 21 verse 4. It says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things have passed away. Friends, we will enjoy intimate relationship, fellowship with God and our loved ones. When that time comes, we will have a great good time. Here, yes, we are enjoying some good times with our family and uh, our friends and all that. But there is still a lot of trouble. But if we are saved and we go to heaven, we will be together all there with Jesus Christ and enjoy and, uh, you know, have a good time. And no matter how spectacular we imagine heaven will be, the believer promises it will even be much more better. The Bible told us in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, that no eye has seen, no ear has as heard and no mind as imagined the things that God has prepared for those who love him you can't even imagine these things they are unspeakable the apostle Paul said the things that I saw it's it's not even allowed for man to utter because of all glorious and beautiful and righteous and Nobody can even be able to. You're not even allowed to utter because people will fall and die. Let's look 
for eternity, friends. Don't look on things here down and that's it. Alright. So that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. You can always download these productions to listen later or maybe share to your friends on, on WhatsApp groups, on Facebook and other places. Please just download them and also favorite and subscribe our channels to always know whenever you post a new Bible study lesson. Otherwise, uh, hope to see you soon in the next one.